What's up, friend? Welcome back to my channel. Y'all should know by now, I am very much anti-gatekeeping, and I feel like there are certain aspects of manifestation that are being gatekept. Not in the sense that no one's talking about them, but I do feel like it's hard to find resources that talk about the law of attraction and manifestation in a practical, non-woo-woo kind of way so that you can easily implement them into your actual life. Do I consider myself to be a spiritual woo-woo person? Kinda. Do manifestation and the law of attraction have to involve the spiritual woo-woo stuff? I don't really think so. In fact, I prefer to look at those two things very pragmatically. So today we're gonna talk about manifestation in a very practical way so that we can dive deep into these concepts and get what we want. The truth is that it's really not that deep or complicated when things actually start clicking. So if you caught my Manifesting 101 video, consider this Manifesting Fundamentals 102. Okay, that was the GE. This is, this one's for the major. And speaking of that, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel or taken a look at my manifestation playlist, highly recommend you do that. We're talking about mindset. We're talking about how to manifest a specific person, how to manifest a home, how to manifest money. We're doing it all over here. And we're vlogging. We are occasionally vlogging as well. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into it. These are the three secrets to manifesting, how to practically manifest. We're not being woo-woo, we're not being nebulous, we're not being vague. We're getting into it. Secret number one, you cannot manifest anything new if you're making the same old moves with the same old mindset. This is where the idea of living in the end comes in and I feel like that can get a little complicated because it's like, I'm manifesting being a millionaire and I don't even have McDonald's money. How am I supposed to pretend that I'm a millionaire when I'm not? Your first issue is that you don't have the McDonald's app. Okay, download that. They're giving shit away for free on there every single day. Okay, start there. But in all seriousness, it all comes down to the way that you carry yourself and the way that you interpret the world around you. These changes can be really simple. Let's go with this money manifestation for example. What does a rich person's mindset actually look like? I can almost guarantee that rich people aren't spending all their free time worrying about money. They probably understand that money is abundant. That is, there is a lot of it in circulation right now and a lot of that can be mine. So we're not stressing in the sense that there isn't enough money out there for us. They probably have a business or a way to make money in this capitalist society that is lucrative. Doesn't have to start out lucrative and usually it does not, but the goal there is to make a lot of money. They go into that business or that job with the intention of making money and they have a game plan to help them get there. But don't get too stuck on the game plan because we're gonna we're gonna talk about that later. A rich person's home is probably a reflection of their stress-free life, right? They probably have a housekeeper that's cleaning, a chef that's making them healthy meals, a trainer that's telling them what to do in the gym and how much to run and all of that stuff. Whatever it may be, implement these daily habits to put you in that mindset of that rich person. We're not out here with housekeepers and chefs and drivers and personal trainers, but maybe we can make an effort to keep our space clean, to eat healthy foods that nourish us and make us feel good, to move our bodies, to apply to higher paying jobs, to start that side hustle after your nine to five to make some extra money, whatever it may be. But I think the really big part here is that understanding that money is abundant. That's called the abundance mindset, right? There's a lot of money out there and it can and will be yours. The problem is that a lot of us, myself included, are so caught up in our current reality that we lack the imagination to see our end and really live in it. Like in the example above, it might be hard to keep your space clean when you live with your three younger siblings and they're fucking your stuff up all the time. But do what you can, make progress towards your goal every single day, even if it is the tiniest tippy toe little step, and live in your current reality as if it is already a memory. I'm a big journal girly, as y'all might know, so when I was manifesting my relationship with Will, for example, I was living in West Hollywood, single girly on my own, and I would write in my journal about my current reality as if it were a pleasant memory. And I would take those nostalgic, memory-based vibes of my journal entries and inject them into my everyday life. By looking at my current reality as if it were already a memory, I was so much more grateful for what I was experiencing. I understood that I was in this very special sort of situation in my life. Everything was locked down, right? So all I'm doing is Hanging out over Zoom with my friends, playing a lot of Roller Coaster Tycoon, if you know, you know. Taking really long baths, going on walks. It was truly the start of the hot girl walk for me. I started to appreciate these little moments in my life with the understanding that 
this stage wouldn't last forever. And as excited as I was for my manifestation to come to fruition, I was also kind of pre-nostalgic for my then reality. And honestly, I look back on that time now and I loved it. I loved every freaking second of it. I absolutely got what I needed to out of that time. Living in the end is such a huge part of manifesting because it truly requires shifting your mindset and the moves that you're making to align with a future that you haven't experienced yet. That's a huge thing. It's hard. It's probably the hardest part for me and I feel like a lot of people can relate to that. But inserting gratitude into your current reality while also kind of shifting your mindset and making space for your manifestation is key. The second secret to manifesting, this is once you get that living in the end part down, is to maintain your mental diet and your mindset. This is basically like the maintenance phase. And this is the part for me where being a little bit more ritualistic kind of helps and it's gonna look different for everyone but I'll give you a few examples of things that you can do to maintain your mental diet and stay positive on this journey towards your manifestation. My favorite way to maintain my mental diet Y'all already know it's journaling. I'll write down affirmations. I'll write letters to and from my future self. Sometimes I will fill an entire page with the same affirmation because stuff's not clicking and I need it to connect. Another great way to maintain your mental diet is meditating. Y'all, I'll do guided meditations where I meet and talk to my future self. <laughs> and this sounds very woo woo, but just bear with me. If you find yourself stressing a lot about your manifestation and your mind just won't shut up, try meditating, just try it. And I will link a couple of my favorites in the description if you are interested. But even if you find the whole like, connect to your future self and manifest money meditation stuff a little silly, the purpose of meditating is to quiet your mind and train yourself to focus. Sometimes you just need a quick 15, 20 minute something or other to get your head back in the game. Meditation is great for that. Kind of same, same, but different is visualization. I do this one a lot too. When you're in the shower or laying in bed about to go to sleep, resting on the couch, whenever you're kind of in a more relaxed state, take a deep breath, close your eyes, and just take a few moments to visualize your manifestation. Create a scenario that would exist if your manifestation happened with your mind's eye. Does that make sense? So if you're manifesting a new job, create a scene in your mind that coincides with that manifestation. So maybe you're walking into your new office and they have Ariana Grande blasting in the lobby and everyone looks happy and there's free matcha and your boss gives you your first assignment and it's something that you actually like doing. If you're manifesting a relationship, visualize a scenario that would happen in that relationship. You're on a date. Are you in a nice fancy restaurant? Are you at one of those places where they throw the ax? Are you laughing a lot? Are you deep in conversation? What does the person look like? What's happening around you? Really go there. The whole point that I'm trying to make here with maintaining your mental diet is that chances are the thing that you're manifesting is probably a bigger life change. Maybe it's a new job, a new home, moving to a new city, a relationship, whatever that may be, and it's not gonna happen overnight. Not saying it can't, but chances are it probably will take a little bit of time. So you need to strap in and find ways to keep yourself going because there are gonna be certain days when your current reality is just not it and you don't think that your manifestation is gonna happen. And by the way, doubt is normal. Having negative thoughts about your manifestation is normal. No one is positive all the time. No one believes in themselves 24 seven, okay? But you gotta find a way to turn those negative thoughts around and just keep it pushing. That resilience is what's gonna get you to where you wanna be. And speaking of resilience, let's take it a step further with the third secret here, which is that manifesting requires a level of detachment and surrender. And when I say that, I don't mean surrender to your negative thoughts and get stuck in the negative loop. I also don't mean surrender to your current reality and think that your manifestation is gonna happen when no work is being put in and nothing is changing. What I mean by detachment is detaching from the how, as in, I've been doing my manifestation for months, I've been writing my affirmations, I've been visualizing and I still don't have it yet. What the hell is going on here? Clearly my manifestation is not meant to be. Okay, first of all, if your manifestation is not meant to be, your intuition is gonna tell you that. And intuition is not a woo-woo thing, okay? We all got a gut feeling. When you're pursuing a relationship with someone and you have a pit in your stomach every time you talk to them, but you ignore it and try to manifest something serious with them anyway, maybe that pit in your stomach is trying to tell you to cease operations. But when you're pursuing something and you experience a hardship or it's taking longer than you thought, 
Those are not reasons to quit. And I'm gonna be super realistic here about manifestation and just life in general. A lot of the things that bring happiness and contentment and success into your life are not easy to get. But just because it doesn't come easy to you doesn't mean it's not worth pursuing anymore. The rules of life still apply to your manifestation and there's a reason why the saying, it's always the darkest before the dawn is a cliche. Let's say you're pursuing acting and you're manifesting being a successful working actor. There are gonna be a lot of times in your acting journey where you face rejection and anxiety and hardships, okay? And I say this as someone who does commercial acting, like it ain't theatrical, I understand that, but it gets very uncomfortable sometimes. If you're trying to be an actor, you're gonna have to put yourself out there. You're gonna have to go to auditions and hear a lot of no's or silence. And that's gonna happen the majority of the time. You're gonna bomb auditions, you're gonna bomb callbacks, you're gonna have people trying to take advantage of you. That's all a part of the journey. It is not an easy road, but if it makes you happy, if you love it, if you're passionate about it, if you feel all floaty and excited in your gut when you do it, don't give up when it gets hard. Don't give up when you're in a situation where you have to leave your comfort zone. Detach from those negative thoughts that are telling you that you're not worthy and that it's not gonna happen for you. And more importantly, detach from your idea of how it's all gonna play out. We as human beings love to plan. We love predictability. We love to think that we have it all figured out and we know how it's gonna go. We do not, okay? We definitely, we definitely don't. So if you're manifesting a happy, loving relationship and you meet a cute, nice guy in the grocery store, that doesn't necessarily mean that that first guy you meet is going to be the one that you're gonna be in the relationship with. If you're manifesting money and you suddenly get a Facebook message from your friend from high school and she's like, hey girly, just checking in, how are you? Listen, have you ever thought about selling essential oils? You should join my team. That doesn't necessarily mean that that's your source of money. Sometimes you gotta go out on multiple dates. You gotta put yourself out there in multiple ways. You gotta test the water. You gotta try different jobs. You gotta try different businesses. You gotta work things out a little bit. And honestly, I'm grateful that I don't get what I want right away because chances are, for example, if you're manifesting money or a relationship, and you get it right away and you have no experience and you haven't faced any hardships and you don't know how to problem solve, you're not gonna know what to do with that success. This is what they mean when they say the journey is the destination, man. Keep your head in the game. Do whatever rituals you gotta do to maintain your mental diet. If it makes you feel better to do the woo-woo spiritual stuff, do that. If it makes you feel better to visualize or write in your journal or keep track of what you're doing in a planner, do that. Doesn't really matter what you do here. What matters is how you feel about what you're doing. But think and move as if you already have what you're manifesting. Put in the work, but also listen to your intuition and accept the fact that you can't plan out your life perfectly. Chances are the thing that you're manifesting is gonna require some major growth and change to happen. And I find that exciting. It's exciting to ride that wave and to change and grow and enter a new chapter of your life. There are certain things that need to happen for your manifestation to come to fruition that you don't even know about. And this is especially true if you're manifesting something you've never had before, which I feel like applies to the majority of us. We don't know what we don't know about our manifestation, and that's okay. Be open to the possibility of things going differently than you originally thought. Be open to the possibility and the high probability that sometimes it's gonna be difficult and you're gonna have to hang in there. And most importantly, be open to the understanding that what is truly meant to happen for you is going to manifest. So those are the three secrets to manifesting in a practical way. I hope that this helped. I just like to keep it real and actually talk about the actionable steps that it takes to get what you want. So let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if you just want to discuss. I love that. And I will see you in my video next weekend. Happy manifesting.